All right, in this lesson, we're gonna explain to you what a trial balance is, and then we're gonna show you how we prepare it using all of the journal entries that we did in the past lessons, as well as the posting of the T accounts that we did in the previous lesson. So with that, let's get started on trial balances. So if you remember in the last lesson, we have all of these transactions and we've totaled them up and we have all of these T accounts with these balances. What that means is if I ask you how much cash does the company have in their bank account, they should have 40,000 for 25. If I said how much supplies do they have in their business, they should have 825. Um, how much do they owe on a notes payable? They have $10,000. So we've summarized here all of the activities within a cycle for this business, Walnut Creek Inc. So once we have that, um, then we need to prepare the trial balance. Now the problem with this is that this right here is just too bulky. So if you think about it, if I gave this to a manager, they would not know exactly what that meant, right? They would just look at these T's and go, okay, I don't really care about the details. I just want the ending balances because that's what the, what's gonna help me with the analysis at the end of the day. So this is kind of too bulky. So I don't just wanna print this out and give it to my supervisor. So we have something called a trial balance. A trial balance is kind of a report form that allows for ease of reviewing the information when it comes to the accounting data. Okay, so what is a trial balance? Well, the trial balance is simply a list of all of the accounts and their summarized amounts. So it's all of these accounts as well as their ending balance amount. That's it. That's a trial balance, okay? Now, it basically summarizes all of the T accounts that we just saw a minute ago. Now, what is the purpose of the trial balance? Well, we use the trial balance as a way to quickly get information out, but the other purpose of the trial balance is to ensure that all of our debits equal our credits because we know that the accounting equation cannot be violated and in order to make sure of that, a trial balance act helps us at least understand whether or not the, the debits and credits equal each other. If they equal each other, then there's less likely that a mistake was made throughout the journalization process, okay? Now, this is also the first step in preparing the financial statement, specifically the balance sheet. So I'm gonna show you how to do the balance sheet, but I can't show you that until we do the trial balance, which helps us get all of the amounts, as well as all of the accounts that are associated with assets, liabilities, and owner's capital. So with that, we're going to take this information right here and we're going to create a trial balance. Now, one thing you should know is that I don't have space to leave this on the screen. So you might want to screenshot this um, or just have this maybe written down somewhere because you're going to need it to actually do the trial balance. I'll give you a second here to go ahead and screenshot this if you, that's the way that you want to do it. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the trial balance. So we get to the trial balance, it looks like this. So this is the trial balance. Now to prepare the trial balance, we simply take the ending balance of each T account and list them from top to bottom. Now there is an order technically. The assets go first, then the liabilities, and then the equity, then the dividends, then the revenue, then the expenses in that order, okay? Now, we also list them from most liquid to least liquid. You're gonna hear that a lot, especially when we talk about the balance sheet, most liquid to least liquid, so that's how we kind of order them here. So, you, you might have it in front of you, all the T accounts, I have it in front of me. So let's go ahead and start just putting together this trial balance. Now, we up here at the top, we've got the who, the what, the win. So this is Walnut Creek Inc's unadjusted trial balance. Now there's a reason why we use unadjusted because in a later section we're gonna uh, teach you about adjustments. And so we do unadjusted first, then we make adjusting entries, and then we'll do another trial balance called the adjusted trial balance. Then we'll make something called closing entries and then we'll have like the closing trial balance or a closing entry trial balance. So we've got different trial balances here. That's why we're gonna label this as unadjusted trial balance. Now the date here is as of 
uh, April 30th, 20X1, we said that a trial balance is as of a date in time rather than a period in time. So a date in time, this is as of the end of business day on April 30th, 20X1. All right, so we're gonna go to our T accounts and in our T accounts, we're gonna start with assets, then liabilities, then owner's equity, then dividends, then revenues, and then expenses. And we're gonna list them all down and then their ending balance amount. So if I go look at our T accounts, my first liquid account will be an asset, would be cash, and that's gonna be a debit of 40,425. So if I look at the T account, it's on the left side, so it's gonna on the left side of this T account. All right, the next thing that's most liquid that's an asset, it's probably supplies. So supplies is 825. Uh, then we have the next account. Equipment is probably a little bit uh, less liquid, so we'll put that next. Equipment of 11850 And then the least liquid here is a sign, probably, probably because that sign can't necessarily be reused because it's probably cut a certain way, and so it's very specific to the business, so it's harder to sell it if it doesn't uh, if another business doesn't have the same name. So we'll put that there and then the logo. Obviously the logo is probably least liquid because it's particular to the business and not any other business can technically need it at the end of the day. So we'll put that at the bottom. Then if we keep going down to the T's, we can find some liabilities, accounts payable. Now this one's a credit. So instead of the debit uh, column, we'll put it on the credit column. We also have notes payable, and that notes payable is for $10,000. And that takes care of all of our liabilities. Next thing that we have is our common stock. And that's gonna be $40,000. And then we usually total it up at the end. So the total up, if we add up the first column all the way down, we should get 60,000. Uh, 290. And then if we add up the right column, we get 60,290. What does that mean? That means that for the most part, the entries that we did should be correct because our T uh, trial balance balances, if they weren't correct, they wouldn't balance. So uh, from our standpoint here, unless we put in the wrong account, which we could have, uh, we can assume that the trial balance is correct, which means our journal entries are correct as well. So that is the lesson here on trial balance. It's simply just all of the accounts, all of the amounts listed, and their ending balances. That's it. No other calculation. So it's again a copy job. So once we copy it from the general journal to the ledger, to the T accounts, then to here, then we're all good with the trial balance. Now from the trial balance, we can then uh, take a look at starting to do the financial statements, including the balance sheet, statement of cash flows, uh, income statement, and statement of retained earnings. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how we do a trial balance, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw, share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.